Hey, welcome back. Barrel Proof Baseball Podcast. We are continuing with our craft distilleries uh, reviews. Um, I've been really lucky. I've had a lot of really great bourbons sent my way. And uh, so I want to review these because a number of them are going to be appearing on the podcast. Some of them aren't, which, you know, that's fine too. Um, I'm happy to try out bourbon. One of which we're going to talk about today. First thing is going to be just a couple of ways you can support Barrel Proof Baseball. One is by ordering from manscaped.com and get 20% off when you use the code BPB at manscaped.com. So free shipping, 20% off manscaped.com. Also, there's going to be a link for Manscaped as well as uh, Bottomless Coffee, which will be in the description box below. Bottomless Coffee is a subscription um, company, a subscription-based coffee program where you will get a free um, bag of coffee. I think your second bag is free when you order using my link below. Um, but it comes with a Wi-Fi-enabled scale. Put your coffee on there when you're low. They go off of what your taste profile is like, and they will send you more coffee so that you don't run out. So if you're like me and you're addicted to coffee, that might be a good thing for you. So I'm planning on having an endless amount of coffee sitting here waiting for me. Um, today, we are going to talk about Boone County Jail Distillery. Okay. Boone County Jail Distillery. This is their bourbon, uh, their straight bourbon, Kennard and Drake or Kennard and Drake, I believe it's pronounced. And they are out of Lebanon, Indiana. It's not Lebanon, it's Lebanon. Um, I had an opportunity to speak with their owners, Nikki and Sean Stoller, uh, their brother and sister, and they're running this distillery and it's literally out of a old jail um, that's in Indiana. And this one, the Kennard and Drake is actually named after guys that were like, instrumental in getting the, um, the county or the city going. Um, let's see. Yeah. It doesn't say much about it on here, but yeah. So it's a, uh, it's got a great story. They have other spirits that are all like jail themed. One of which is conjugal visit, which I thought was really funny. Um, Sean and Nikki were super nice. They are super gracious with their time. Um, they're very knowledgeable. They're very passionate about what they do. And I'm really excited to launch that episode here probably in the next uh, week or two. So I'm really looking forward to getting that, that one out there because I think, I think this is one of those brands that many people may have not heard of or seen yet. But when you do, I think it's worth a try. I think you'll like it because it's a, uh, you gotta, I love the family owned idea. Um, I love every their, their whole story. I'm not gonna I'm gonna spoil it now, but um, when you when you watch the episode, just listen to how excited Nikki and Sean are when they talk about their brand and what they're doing, and it's just awesome. I think they've got a great thing going. Um, super nice people, and I, I hope that they do really well. I hope their brand takes off. I hope people get really excited about them because it's good whiskey. They are in, so this old jail that they're in, Sean kind of breaks it down a little bit. They, they go into detail about how they acquired this old jail. There's a restaurant there. Um, you know, there's some storage things that are, that make it difficult because of the size of the jail that they're in. And uh, they've just, you know, they've refurbished this to work for their benefit, how they, uh, how they need to use it. So again, check out the episode. I'm not going to go into detail about it because I think it's one worth checking out. So take a look once it's released here in a week or so. Um, but the whiskey itself is, is nice. I mean, this is a five-year-old bourbon. Um, this is their signature, their signature bourbon, if you will. It's got a little spice. It's weird. It's like a spice sweetness on the nose. Um, I can't quite put my finger on it. Maybe like a, like a clove but it's not, it's not overwhelmingly spicy. So it's not, I don't think it's heavy on the rye. I don't know what their percentages are on their mash bill. Um, they might've mentioned it in the episode, but um, it's not, I don't think it's overly rye, but it's, it definitely, uh, there's some spice there. I'm going to go with clove. I'm going to say clove, but not like the, uh, 
like when you smell a Christmas candle and you get that clove cinnamony smell, it's like that, but kind of doled down. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'll go clove. I'm going to go faint clove, but it's got a nice spice to it. Um, I think you like it. Maybe there is more rye in there than I thought. Cause there's a nice spice on that. Gosh, I can't remember. I don't remember if they gave me the mash bill on this or not, but there's okay. There's some definite complexity on this. I really like, okay. What I'm starting to find is you're getting these bourbons that are like the, the leather Oak caramel caramel, whatever your preference is to say, I say caramel, um, vanilla, you know, and then it's either a weeded one where it smooths itself out or it's got the rye spice to it. Or you get the fruity ones. Um, and then the fruit ones, I think, typically need that rye spice to, to kind of like close it all up and finish it nicely. So it's not just a fruity, um, syrupy tasting spirit. This one has definite fruit on the, on the, the palate. It's definitely got some fruit to it. And it's not, it's like a, we can go butterscotch or like a toffee type one, but that spice, that rye spice is certainly in there. So I might be wrong. The nose doesn't smell spicy, but there's a really nice spice to this. The, it's not like ethanol -y, like the alcohol burn from it. It's 92 proof, um, but it just doesn't like, it doesn't hit you with that overwhelming alcohol smell or, or taste. Uh, I think it's more of a rye. So it might be a higher rye. I honestly don't remember. Um, but it's, it's definitely a, a really nice finish with that spice, but it's not a spice from the overwhelming alcohol. So I think that's really nice. I'm going to try and look this up here and see, yeah, I'm not seeing it here, Lloyd. Um, but yeah, I really like that. The, the finish is nice. It kind of lingers around a little bit. It's, I think part of it's because of that rye spice, but The very front, the very front of it's got that fruit. Um, it's definitely got that fruit, that butterscotch toffee flavor kind of lasts most of the time. And then it finishes with a really nice spice. So I'm going to assume that there's more rye in here than I was thinking. And I could be wrong. And I hope Nikki and Sean don't hate me for that if I am wrong. But it's a really nice spice that finishes off that um, fruit and butterscotch or toffee type of a, uh, of a flavor on there. And the finish just lingers because I'm going to say it's because of the rye. That's just me. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm going to go with. So I'm going to assume that that's what that finish is like. I think you should check this out. If you get an opportunity, I don't, again, watch the episode because we did record it a few weeks ago. I don't remember for sure exactly where their distribution's at, but if you're in Indiana or near there, oops, it's that way. Apparently it's mirrored. Um, check them out. Okay. This is a nice bottle. The great people, uh, really want to support them. I really appreciate them sending me this bottle. We're going to go on our baseball scale. Now we're going to go to the 20 to 80 scale. Um, 20 being at the low end of a major leaguer, 80 being a hall of famer, 50 being an average major leaguer. And I'm going to go with a 55. I think this is above average. Um, I think it's better than most just standard whiskeys that you're going to find on the shelf. So I'm going to go with a 55. Um, it, it's got nice complexity. It's got nice spice. Um, but the, the nose for me doesn't do it justice. The flavor is better than the nose. So I like it. Um, it's just, I, I like the flavor better than the nose. It's not off putting by any means, but it doesn't match. It's not even really that close. The, the sweetness up front on the flavor is significantly different than the nose. And I'm not saying that in a bad way. It's just different. I think sometimes you have like distinctive nose, distinct taste, and then a distinct finish. This nose is completely different because the taste is like fruity into that sweetness, into a spice, and it's really nice. And the nose just doesn't really match with any part of that. So 
I don't know that it's necessarily a bad thing, but for me, I'm going 55. I am picking it up if I'm in Indiana and I see this on the shelf because I think it's worthwhile to have. It's a really nice company. It's a really nice bottle and it's a nice bourbon. I think you'll enjoy it. So try it out. Subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you think. Leave some comments if you get a chance to try the Kennard and Drake from Boone County Jail Distillers, right? Thanks to Nikki and Sean for sending this my way. Look forward to the next one. Cheers.